You know, when people are listening to headphones, and I mean listening to headphones, mm. there's a certain amount of space in there, right, that, that people call soundstage imaging, you know, the images within the soundstage. And you need space to cr for your brain to create that soundstage, right? So the ear pad, that space inside the ear pad, is the space when it comes to a headphone. It's the equivalent of speakers in a room, right? But way closer, mm. way smaller, tiny. Not a lot of air in there. So what's in that space, just like in a big room, affects way more affects the sound. And like one thing we found out with, now we've got a plethora of ear pad options here, right? Different materials. Mm -hmm. Materials, the size of the space, the depth of the space, and even with our base ported ear pads, the ability to let the driver breathe more all affects imaging, soundstage, the space. So let's talk about the space. Well, I guess if you go in the opposite direction, IEMs is like, nope, they're in your ear, right? So that everybody always says they're like, everything sounds like it's like in the middle of your yeah, that would be Sprain, like, you know? yeah, that'd be like worst case so scenario they, for yeah. like lack of space. No space. Well, yeah. the room is basically your ear canal yeah. in that situation. Yeah, which really doesn't make much for a room. Right. It's but kinda... it makes sense when you have a headphone, it's sitting on your head right there. And the only thing in between it and your ear is the ear pad, the materials they're made out of and whatnot. It could have a pretty big impact on the sound. And well, that's why we have several variants of ear pads now. Yeah, and you think about it, you go back a few years and... These weren't options. Like, you know, you, what came with the headphone is what you had. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think even today, I mean, we're doing this with different materials and ear pad construction and engine. These ear pads are engineered for our headphone. Right? We, mm -hmm. The porting is made to port our driver. And um, Yeah, they're not universal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, who else is doing it? To, um, Quite a few companies now are offering either standard multiple ear pads or additional ear pads uh, for accessories. But part of the issue is some of the companies kind of just make ear pads that fit the headphones, and they're not made for the headphone. So it makes it a little more gray sometimes because there's always a pairing that works best for this headphone or that headphone. There's a, a fan favorite or a recommended one. But the complicated thing is... It isn't necessarily that the ear pad that's good or bad or the headphone is good or bad because of the way it sounds with this setup. It's always people are trying to highlight whatever this headphone does that they consider to be magical or exceptional, right? So you're trying to find the combination that produces the most excitement or desirable well, sound profile for you. Yeah, and that's exactly it. That It's a personal choice at that point, yep. you know? And it's kind of cool. What we found is kind of cool to be able to change the room, so to speak, uh, within the ear pad structure. And to easily, too. To suit you. <laughs> yeah, because our pads are magnetic, it's, it's real easy. It's, you can try it out. And some people prefer the, the vegan. Some people prefer leather. Some people switch between what they're listening to. You know, so. Yeah, the, mater the materials, and we should probably discuss that, the materials, just like in a room where, you know, if you have a, think, picture an empty room with windows, mm. right? Nothing in it. You walk in there, you clap your hands, huge echo, uh -huh. you know? Right. Now you put furniture in there, paintings on the wall, draperies on the windows, things in the room, and you do the same clap, and now it's subdued, it's more relaxed. It's, it doesn't echo so much because there's things in there absorbing that, that clap. You just put people in the room, and you even get more absorption. So same thing with, within the ear pad. The, material, the materials that the ear pad's made of, uh, the foams inside, the, inside mm -hmm. absorb sound. The materials reflect or absorb depending on what they're made of. And, of course, the interior space, width, height, depth, you know, also change up the sound within that space. So, anyway, those are the things that as manufacturers of headphones, we get to play with. And, uh, you know, like you were saying, it's a personal thing because a lot of people talk about their hearing, you know, their internal, the way their internal ears are, they hear something different. You have a, a plethora of experience levels, too, where people might be used to a certain sound. Well, it's also what you're listening to. 
<laughs> Why <Lighten> the <to> music? <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. Some people that would, you want to tone some things down a little bit. You know, it's like I can't listen to this on anything because it's just too harsh or something. So yeah, if you're listening to stuff from the '60s or '70s that was you know recorded on tape with tubes, it's probably gonna have a completely different character to some of the modern, you know, headbanging shit that's out there that's mm -hmm. <laughs> synthesized music, so to speak. And you'll have different needs for that too, right? So I mean, it's it's kind of cool to be able to. Uh, say, well, here, here's, here's a headphone with a specific driver design, whatever, a plane, in our case, planer. But look how we could tailor this to you by just the change of materials or ear pads and, or changing the room up. And it, it's pretty cool to be able to do that, you know. And um, the other thing I want to discuss, though, more than that, even more than that, is it's not even just, I think a lot of people, when they wear headphones, they're more two dimensionally thinking, you know, because you're not really, depth Depth is difficult to achieve with headphones, right? It's right next to your ear. Without it being physically well, yeah. very large. Well, yeah. Yeah. you do have headphones that literally put, you know. Yeah, and that's how they're getting, that they're, by, by moving the driver away from your ears and creating yeah. a bigger space, they're actually creating more depth well, they within that speaker space. Speaker-like, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and that's like our AB1266 was right. designed to do that where you could, it's designed not to clamp. You physically pull the head, ear pads, pull the ear pad away from your head, pull the drivers away from your head, the speakers are further out, and it gives you this sense of spatial, like a room. It's like re recreating a room. Well, I guess that's a lot of people say it's like uh, they, that these both have like similar, almost identical drivers in them, but they sound completely different, and that's obviously one of the biggest reasons is. The acoustics. Is, yeah, how different physically they are. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, and I mean, and, with that, because of the foam, we got this crazy foamed aluminum, this aerospace material on the sides that just breathe. It, on our drivers, it's like having nothing. The, the, the reference was to have nothing on the sides. No reflection, no nothing. Drivers right. breathe out. And that foamed aluminum does is like having nothing there. Well, as close as you can get. Clearly, yeah. nothing is still yeah, right. the ideal, but you can't it, just put nothing. It's hard to hear the difference with, the, with sides and no sides on that headphone. It does very little. You know, and where the majority of headphones, even if they're called open back, there's all kinds of stuff back there that's reflecting the sound. And, you know, it, what, what, I guess we should even define that. What happens with the majority of headphones is the driver's producing sound off the front of it and off the back. The sound emanating from the back has to go somewhere. If it doesn't go anywhere, it's bouncing back at your ear mm -hmm. in a delayed fashion, whatever, right? But that reflection, that sound reflections going on in the headphone are what people perceive as more intimacy, like mids can be more forward because they're bouncing off the back of the, something in the headphone and coming right back at you rather than the back wave emanating or leaving the headphone. So, you know, the, the way that the, the design of the headphone actually sets up um, a lot of what's going on in the mids and highs in a headphone. Um, it sort of sets up how effective the ear pad is, I guess you would say, because the impact of the different materials, the foams, the shape and size and stuff, it isn't really necessarily just that one side of the argument. You also have the back wave of the driver. And to some extent, the ratio between what's happening in front of it and behind it has... Uh, it gives you more or less an idea of the proportions of how much this is going to impact it. So on something like a closed headphone, where it's really close to your ear, in those situations, oftentimes, the ear pad does even more. And the further away it gets, oftentimes, the ear pad does sort of less contribution to the impact. Um, well, I think primarily because they're absorbing. With a closed back, you tend to absorb a lot of the back wave. It's got to go somewhere. And if it's closed, then they probably have absorption materials internally right so you're kind of yeah. like i don't know i mean to me that's you know it's a catch-22 but you got to do something with that, that it's got to go somewhere you know yeah and um and i mean you know it depends on the again it totally depends on the design like we don't have any uh absorption in diana um, mr diana tc or 1266 um and we get away with it primarily because we we're creating a very open back structure for that driver to just, you know, a majority of it is going out the sides yeah. rather than bouncing back at mm -hmm. you. Well, we do have a very unconventional approach in that aspect because most headphones have a considerable amount of dampening material inside the headphone because it's required to meet the design goals. And that's not necessarily a good or bad thing. 
Um, but the way we design our headphones is we try to make them work as open as possible, first and foremost. Um, so that very much changes the ear pads contribution in a lot of regards. Um, and I think it produces a more desirable outcome. So, right. So back to the topic of space where, you know, where you have a truly open back headphone, like a 1266, which is probably the most open back headphone that I'm aware of, where, you know, you, you, it, it's so open that I, I know people describe sometimes the mids are recessed, right, on that headphone. Mm-hmm. Well, the reality of they're not recessed. The driver's putting out the same mid-range information that the other headphones are doing, right? But because there's no reflection at all off the back, it's completely open, the mids sound like they're coming from out there, but then so does everything else. The drums behind the mids and, you know, the, the instruments are, are in place. They're just further out. Well, if anybody's ever used, like, uh, electrostatic speakers, placement is key, you know. You, in a room. Yeah, they have the same kind of problem where it's like, if they're too close to a wall, they don't sound good at all, right? It's yeah, like right. you get all the reflections and everything. But, yeah, you move, you got to move like five, six feet out, and it's like, oh, this is like a whole different... Yeah, and a lot of times <laughs> you, know? you actually have to put absorption in the corners yeah. or, or in somewhere you move yeah. absorbing panels or foam panels. Usually it's difficult to find a room. But, yeah, I've, I've seen them people use huge planar speakers in big mm-hmm. rooms and get them way out. Yeah. So the walls aren't much of a factor. But, again, yeah, you're dealing with reflections just yeah. like in a headphone. The backside's putting out audio. And then your standard, off the every walls. Every other speaker is a box, so they have to deal with it internally. And so you, it, the placement yeah. is still critical, but the back wave isn't a problem. True. Anymore. Yeah, within a speaker box, which most people don't know what's inside their speakers. But magic. magic. Yeah, it's it a could, lot of magic. magic. But usually they use some sort of combination of a full a foam or a, you know, a, some sort of fibrous material or something to absorb the back wave. Um, particularly in a woofer, because it's got to go somewhere. And Well, uh, for the same reason, though, right? The sound would bounce off the rear of the mid-range driver or whatever, the speaker, bounce off the cabinet interior, and come back through the cone material. You're going to hear it through the cone. The cone's dang. Yeah. So it, basically you're, you have the sound of the driver or the cone or the speaker, and then you have the sound of what it sounds like in the cabinet coming back at you too, right, in some delayed fashion. So... Speakers are the same thing. So, you know, but that, but I think primarily a lot of people, when they listen to headphones, um, a lot of headphones aren't really open, open back there. There's a lot of reflections coming back at them. And so, when I think when headphones tend to get really intimate, as intimate as people call it, right, where you basically you have a strong amount of reflections, you know, it, it just sounds more forward, right? It, it's just not out there. And, um, well, but some people like that. You do have limitations, obviously, in a headphone compared to speakers because, like, size and weight and everything. Because, like, yeah, like BM, BMW and the Nautilus, you know, they did those tapered, you know, yeah. cones. And you could do that in a speaker, have a, you know, a, a tube that's, like, three feet long. To, yeah. <laughs> you know, kind of back. work with the wavelengths yeah. you're dealing with. To like, so yeah, it doesn't get you back can't at exactly you. can't exactly start putting it absorbs it along its path. on the back of your headphone. You yeah. Know? <laughs> we tried that once, didn't we? We did try it. <laughs> It didn't work. It didn't, it didn't work, yeah. <laughs> and Did we has, tell everyone the secret yeah, with sh- MR, yeah. though? Oh, no. Oh. What? Should it's we? pretty much the same as a Diana TC, just more restricted. Well, and the driver's different. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 But right. besides, <laughs> besides, besides that, those two things. <laughs> but that's like the vast difference, right? Yeah. It's, it's shocking how much it changes the perception on the, the mid-range frequency. Right. It's, it's a material change on the backside. Yeah. Of, of the interior of the, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was surprising. And looking at it, you can't yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't know, you know, looking at it. You know, it's, mm-hmm. me- it's, it's, it's actually not even really measurable, is it? It's really hard yeah, to see yeah. it. The FR measure. doesn't really vary. No. Not much. Yeah. No. You're not going to, you're not going to say, oh, there it is. Yeah. But you perceptually, know? it's very obvious. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And Another that's one of just, those curiosities. And that's just the, the focus on certain frequencies you know, how, how close they are to you versus being out there, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I'd say, and I'd say actually that's true. I mean, when you think about our th- current three model lines where we have the big 1266, which is as open as it gets, and everything's s- spatial information. If, the, if, you have a, if you have a song that has a, shows a room that's eight foot wide and you could tell from the track it's recorded so well mm-hmm. that you get that space, 
you, on that you'll hear a room that's eight foot wide. You can hear the boundaries of the original recording space. Same with if it was closed in, you'll hear that too. You know, when you get to like Diana TC, which is the, a miniaturized version of that, right, where everything comes closer and everything's the space, the ear pads, everything's smaller, right, more mm -hmm. intimate, right? Now that space comes down to like here. That's the limits of it. It's not out there. So even if you're listening to a recording that was made in a room that was eight feet wide, it's still this big. Mm -hmm. That's the limits. Pretty much. You know, and then you go to Diane Amara, which brings it even a little closer. It's still out, but closer. And a lot of people like that. See, that's the thing. As, right. you, as you decrease depth, which is a third, to me, it's a third dimension, right, in headphone listening. Well, it's, something like that. It's, it's something that you should have in a room with speakers if the speakers are set up properly in a room. So, for example, let's let's go. Let's talk about a room real quick. Oh boy! All right, yeah. Let's not go too far into it. But a lot of people have bookshelf speakers. They stick them on a shelf on a wall, mm -hmm. right? You have no depth. There's no depth. The speakers are against the rear wall, and they're just making sound. So you get this two-dimensional sound out of it. Yeah, sure, flat. it's playing, but there's no there's no sound stage created. There's no depth. You can't you can't isolate the singer in the front, the drummer behind him. There's nothing going on. It's just flat, right? Whereas if you take a pair of speakers and actually properly place them in a room, a few feet from the wall, boundaries and stuff like that, toe in and out, you sit at a specific distance from it, not sitting in you know, the next room over, and you'll actually create an image that goes out and in between the speakers with depth. It actually has depth. With yeah. the singer standing in front. And, and, so, and I think a lot of people probably have never heard that before, unless you had right a well, properly set up speaker system that's the pro the properly set up is the problem right because if you're like you and you're living like in my living room i have my speakers and i i i moved them away from the wall to where they sounded the best but then it's impractical because then they're in the way right, yeah, right. You, i you're don't tripping want speakers on your own speakers. four feet away from the wall yeah. so you had to compromise and you know right but if you had a dedicated room then you, no don't, problem. Need to, you don't need to compromise yeah. so. but a majority of people do not right you know, and I'd say a majority of people probably just shove the speakers in a corner somewhere. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? I've seen a lot of pictures of people have nice systems, but they they don't have the room. Right. They have. I'm just like, you get it. You got dogs and kids, and I mean, you can't you need a have lot of speakers room. in the middle of a room. You know. Right. Well, to do it right with speakers, you practically need unlimited space, an infinite size room, and well, then you avoid a lot of the issues. That solves some problems. But yeah. <laughs> you know, somewhere in between that and what's practical is what people end up with, and. Unfortunately, the reality is it's just it's not reasonable to have well, a 5,000 foot room or something. To even make this video longer, where it all went to hell, is we got rid of the tube TVs that sat on a stand that mm. took up three feet. Yeah, that's yeah. actually you know, a factor. As yeah. soon as you mounted TVs to a wall, right. the speakers were in the, the way. The speakers need to be thin. They're, I mean, they're, they're in the way. They're like this well, stuff you standing get rid of that on the whole floor. Like, cabinet that had the TV yeah, in it yeah, and yeah. With all the stuff. Yeah, you had a, it, yeah, yeah, before back in the day, us guys had a place, a reason to put speakers there. We had this. They used to be Got five feet away or TV something. There. Yeah, so hey, let's put speakers to either side. We we're good. Yeah. Now, as soon as that flat screens came about, yeah, that kind of went to hell. So you almost, it almost, you could see why people have moved to headphones too for kind of the same reason. You want to listen to nice music, but you can't have a lifestyle speakers. change. Yeah, you know, so you could see where that would take over. Anyway, short story is yes, headphones have a room, it's inside the ear pads, the ear pad shape. And materials set up the sound of that room, mm -hmm. as does the way that, like you said, close back, open back, the design yeah. of the, the, the chassis and the, the, the interior space also sets up, by depending on how much reflections you get from inside, also sets up how important or how much of a change the ear pads can make. Well, how the headphone is designed has a big impact on the impact the ear pads make. Right. Because well, yeah. on some headphones, not that big of a deal. On others, it's night and day. Right. Really depends on the design and how it's implemented. Yep. So there you have it. Yeah. The room. Mm -hmm. We talked about the room. Mm -hmm. Thanks everyone for watching. Subscribe to us. And if you got any questions, call us. Take care.